Oh, mama, oh, the movie, and I just, oh, oh. I'll take it to you and give me the booty, give me what the booty, give me the booty, give me the booty, give me so you're sitting in a theater and you're watching a play and then you decide, hey, I think we can make that into a movie. And you, so you decide to do that. You talk to your buddy and you go, hey, do you want to see if we can get the rights to that play and make a movie? And that's what these guys did. I'm talking with, the, and oh, this was a while ago. Uh -huh. uh, oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> hi. <laughs> uh, this is Daniel and Matthew. Introduce yourselves. I'm Daniel Arnold. Uh, Matthew Kowalczyk. And so you were sitting in the theater watching a Morris Panish play. Morris Panish is a brilliant, brilliant writer. Yes. And he wrote a play called Arts and Holloman. Yes. Um, and and yes, Holloman. Right nice. <laughs> and uh, what made you suddenly go that that play? Well, well I, I, I'd seen three productions of it before, and it, I just thought it was hysterical. And then you I said... I didn't know he'd seen three productions. You didn't? <laughs> I'd oh, seen you one production of so it, and I'd read, read it. I'd read it. I'd read it. I'm such a big fan of Morris that yeah, I'd read great. all of his plays before I'd seen them. Yeah. Because um, oh. oh. he, he often gets them published at the same time they're getting produced. Right. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we were both from Edmonton, and in Edmonton, I'd get the book before I'd see the production. Nice. Really? I'd seen a production. <laughs> yeah, I'd read it. I just, I read a lot. Um, nice. And so the, the truth is, no. <laughs> I suggested to Daniel, because we're both actors, we're yeah. both actors and we come from the theater, I suggested to Daniel that we do the play. Right, okay. And so then I said, I read it again, and, <laughs> the, and I was like, oh, wait a sec, when we had done a short film together and he'd made a couple other shorts, and, and so I read this, and we'd done theater together, and I was yeah. not bored of theater, but I wanted a new challenge, and, yeah. and uh, so when I read it, I thought, wait a sec, wait a sec this would be an awesome indie feature. And so mm -hmm. he read it with that in mind and we started riffing on that and, and, and here we are. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. well, no, and it, 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 we, 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 it turned into a brilliant, huge thing that's becoming quite the phenom. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, but let's you. go back a little bit because you started this five years ago, right? Yes, About yeah, five yeah. years ago. So uh, how do you first, uh, I guess you have to get the rights from Morris. You have to say, hey, can yeah. I have your play? <laughs> yeah, yes. right. First, we, um, let's see, we got the rights. We yeah. wrote it with in mind that we didn't have a budget in mind. We thought, well, we have no money, so we're just going to do this thing. We're going to write this thing for, uh, you know, a shoot that's going to take place on weekends with friends. Yeah, right. yeah we right. had to figure out the strengths of a film versus a play, and and the fun of it is, is the fun of it is watching this guy get hurt. Yeah, so <laughs> dropping, dropping, uh, or getting him hit by cars, or yes. stung by bees, or attacked yeah. by dogs. Uh, losing and his stuff. leg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. But we should point out, yeah, see, he's missing a he's, leg. He's, yeah. Can yeah. you see that there? Yeah, yeah, yeah right there. Leg. He's missing yeah. a leg. That doesn't come till later, or maybe it never happens. Yeah, it could be that yeah, that's a dream <laughs> sequence. <laughs> Someone is clearly after you. Me, Holman. Me. It, suddenly the film had two giant uh, growths, you said. It went from being, uh, we're going to film this with friends, yeah. to something like, oh, yeah, I guess this we had, is a movie. We, we right? got, we, um, a producer, Paul Armstrong, came aboard and we got development funding um, to option the play and to write it into a screenplay from um, uh, both Astral Media, Harold Greenberg Fund, and also Cor Chorus Entertainment. Uh, so they all of a sudden were like, um, you know, giving us money to develop this into right. a movie and at that point um, so that was all great and that was all fine and good but what that means is that they're investing in the movie and that money needs to be paid mm -hmm. back when you shoot it yeah. right <laughs> so right. we couldn't all of a sudden shoot it for yeah. no money we literally had to pay back this 10 uh, 15 grand that was that yeah. was um, being so given to, to help us develop it so we needed a budget at that point and then the second uh, big thing maybe you're talking about was yes. that when uh, Andrew and Marianne got mm -hmm. involved as ex executive producers. Right. So now, and you pursued them, like you, as you right. were going, hey, this is growing. Yeah, Daniel's oh, the yeah. hard worker here. I, I'm a, I'm <laughs> I think you're going to sit on the couch. Genius. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you're and, like, I'm and Daniel's writing. the hard worker. I'm, Daniel, Daniel did the pursuing. <laughs> I'm this wooing. I, this yeah. gun to my head was yeah. during during development was actually a phone. Right. Said, like, uh -huh. Marianne, please read our script. Please read our script. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Right. So you're like, I'm fixing the punctuation. And what Daniel did, what Daniel did was, he he uh, he called them not just blindly, 
Um, right. He called them because they were specifically looking for comedies, dark comedies. Mm -hmm. It was up their alley. It was what they were looking for. Because you know, mm -hmm. and this was after Fido, or Fido had because yeah. Andrew oh, Fido yeah, yeah, yeah. was the writer director. He was writer director of Fido, Fido. Fido. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, big Canadian film. Yeah. And then they were and like, Marianne what else? It. What else can yeah. we do? And then suddenly <laughs> you went, yeah. How about this? <laughs> oh, they're developing tons of stuff. They're yeah, right. and they yeah, have their own projects. But yeah. they they were, they liked our first Daniels, but then our 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 passion uh, for the project, and most of all, they liked our script. You know, yeah. uh, I think what we found once we had adapted it into a screenplay and shown it to people and got development funding, and the reason we got development funding is because a lot of people in, in kind of the film world saw it as something unique. And, and, and it started is to see it as, if not something special, something with special potential. Nice. Right. Did, you did, like, did Morris get involved again when you were when you were adapting it, or did you talk? Uh, a little bit. I mean, he did, he in, did in a briefly. Sense. He did yeah. briefly. Yeah. <laughs> he just opened the door. Stop. <laughs> yeah, we actually we were very we were very in the beginning we were very like we really wanted to honor his work uh, and and really said hey if you want to be a writer on this uh -huh. one at one point he stepped in and had some really great feedback which was about creating that world around the characters and making sure that they fit in their world. Because Lawrence yeah. Holloman live in a world all their own. Right, uh, right. He called it the wheelhouse. Yeah. The wheelhouse of his characters. And so we were inventing Zoe and uh, Jill, the, the kind of love interests mm -hmm. to yeah. them. And, uh, and he, yeah, he stepped in and said, uh, like, you yeah, know, if this, you're gonna the, do the, that, the wheelhouse to, of my characters, you know. Right. So that really helped us a lot. Yeah, yeah. it's like they, they have to sort of fit into this world. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Don't just write in he, these women characters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. He, encouraged us to kind of keep going that way but basically said but there's more work to be done right, right. won a whole bunch of awards mm -hmm. yeah a, like 11 I guess. 11 awards yeah, yeah. Nice, because you yeah. have you have a couple on the poster that say official selection, which is right. like uh -huh. cool. Yeah. But then you have so many that say winner, winner, right, winner, right. winner, <laughs> winner, yeah. winner, and eventually you'll be yeah. able to take down those official selections. Like that one can yeah. go. <laughs> got another right. winner. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And in a in a True. show of kind of somewhere in between modesty and pride, um, we were very lucky in that the first two festivals we premiered at, which were here in Vancouver, at VIF, and in Edmonton, which are our two hometowns, mm -hmm. very supportive crowds. Um, we won awards at both. Nice. And so from there, what, what that means, what helped was that with that on our resume, other festivals were more interested in looking at us. And it doesn't help us win more awards necessarily, but... but it does get your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't, have a, we don't have a big name. We, you know, Brad Pitt isn't, our, isn't in our film, so no, what's no. going to get people interested mm -hmm. um, <laughs> other than this mustache? <laughs> <laughs> Accuse me of cheating. Who is this? His fiance. Who is this? What's the most important thing you had to uh, keep in your head when you were developing this? That'll be my question for you to wrap okay. up. Okay, okay. Um, um, listen to your audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. Listen and, to your audience. And listen to your heart. Both. Oh. You can't, you can't take one over the other because you can listen to your heart and fight for all your choices. But if your audience is saying your choices aren't right, right. and you don't listen to that, then nobody's ever going to make your movie. Right. <laughs> and, and fundamentally, it means that there's something flawed with it. Yeah, um, you don't and this pander. is something going back and forth co-writing that I learned that is that we've written together for a number of years now and I'll write something that I just love and I'll show him and I'll go what do you think of the scene but even when I think he's wrong I know he's right because I trust him intrinsically I trust I trust his instincts and so when he says something is up that I've written or I do the the opposite mm -hmm. so the same with him we trust each other and we listen to each other and so that's, that's the co-writing experience, but it's also true when you show your script to somebody you trust. Right. If you trust your finances. audience that you are showing it to, meaning one person that might be reading your script yeah. or a group of people, if you trust the person you're showing it to and they tell you something's wrong, then you need to listen not to their solution, but to their questions. Yeah. This is a this is a, a fascinating. I could talk with you guys forever, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if they can watch. They, forever. But they gotta eventually go see. They the have movie. to go. You have to go see the film. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's a Canadian film, so you gotta go quick. Uh, uh -huh, and if uh -huh. you go quick, then the yeah. people who don't go quick can see it because they'll keep it in the theaters longer. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, yes, yes. so go, go quick, go early. Yeah, go and yeah. then go often. Not sexually, just yeah, it just like, yeah, to the never movie. go sexually Line early. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Uh, let's show them the title as mm -hmm. we as we pass away. A brilliant, brilliant film. Congratulations yeah. to both of you. Thank you. <laughs>
Be the mustard on my baloney. Ride my baloney. My nipples are hard. <laughs> <laughs> missing from the register at work. I have no idea, officer. No idea where the fridge might be. Money, fridge, ugh. Yeah. You see, these things happen. Life has its ups and downs, its ebbs.